Hello. Hi. Today we are going to look at how silicon can be used for various application in construction. Essentially, this is a material which has been developed 70 years ago, but it has been a significant development and the innovation which has gone into developing this material has resulted today in using this for architectural applications. I am Ravi Shankar. I am a polymer technologist from UDCT. Uh, I have an overall industrial experience of 23 years out of which 15 years is in construction division. So I work for Dow Chemicals International and uh, this if you all remember has been uh, uh, Dow Chemicals has taken over Dow Corning last year. So and Dow Corning has become part of Dow Chemicals now. So with this brief introduction, I want to take you through uh, some of the you know, important uh, you know, application development, what is gone in using silicon for architectural applications. Essentially, for the facade, if you talk about, there are three main components which are being, where the silicon is being widely used. Uh, one is called structural glazing. It is the method of bonding a glass to the frame using a silicon and then you know, the silicon takes the load. And second is the thermal performance which can also be designed through having a insulating glass again for the hermetically sealed uh, insulating glass unit silicon acts as an import, important and integral part of the insulating glass unit. And third uh, last but not the least on the facade or any application weather seal is one of the critical you know joint design uh, which is going to impart uh, you know significant amount of uh, criticality for the watertight seal. So I will take you through some of the uh, you know details around this and also I am going to take you through uh, uh, some of the applications which are going to be very very new which has been introduced with silicon. So my agenda for today is going to cover one is introduction to silicon sealants. Uh, we are going to talk about structural glazing, insulating glass, weather seal, design, application and quality control. We are also going to talk about industry standards and references, uh, which are the standards which talks about this particular application today and what are the references and how durable the system is. Uh, we are also going to talk about what is essentially needed for this sort of an application to be supported with in terms of services part. So before we start, just to give you a brief idea. If you all know or if you do not know, the silicons are again a synthetic polymers. Okay? They are uh, abundantly available in the earth crust in the form of a quartz sand and from the quartz sand it is mined and then it has been converted into a silicon metal and for an electrical arc process and from the silicon metal to uh, in a silicon polymer uh, like any, any a big uh, you know, distillation column or a petrochemical plant size where the silicon polymer is made. And this silicon polymer becomes one of the integral component for making um, various products used for variety of applications including constructions. So uh, this is one of the you know, important thing to understand is a quartz is the original raw material for making uh, you know, silicon which is available in the earth crust. So this is a process which really talks uh, you know, shows how the uh, total uh, basic train or how the silicon is being made. So it starts from the silicon metal like a lump and then it is grounded to form a ground silicon and this is then added with a methyl chloride where there is a, a mix of and with a catalyst it gets converted into chlorosilane mix. This is then distilled and it has been distilled according to the melting points and the boiling points sorry boiling points and then this is done through the distillation column and uh, the byproduct uh, what is coming out can be recycled and the main product which comes out of this is a siloxane polymer. Okay? So uh, there are two things which are uh, used as an integral uh, you know, material here, one is the ground silicon metal and then the methanol which has been added to that. So uh, which is again converted into the methyl chloride which is then resulting into the formation of polydimethyl siloxane. So this is a polymer which come of, come, comes out of this process. There are only very few manufacturers in the world who have the capability to manufacture from this basic process of manufacturing siloxane. So uh, it, it must be a point for you to you know, really understand because when you go to the market, probably you will find n number of brands coming out with their own product. So 
it is not that uh, you know they all the manufacture they are all the basic manufacturer of silicon polymer they always buy the polymer from somebody like uh, uh, who are the original manufacturers of siloxane uh, because they can sell this polymer into the market and depending upon uh, the requirement the poly polymer has been bought and converted into different products and one of the product is a sealant okay so that's the reason the formulators or the compounders who buy the polymer and then convert that to the uh, finished product uh, you know that's the reason you find many many brands available in the market so the difference between the original manufacturer the original manufacturer can control the entire quality control process uh, compared to the one who is the compounder or a formulator who just takes the material and then converts them into the finished product. So uh, this is just to give you a basic idea about who is the original manufacturer and how it starts from and also to give you an idea about the compounders and where they start from. Okay. So this final polymer which comes out can be converted into different forms. Okay. This can be uh, formed like a fluid, this can be act like a dispersion, so like an aerosol or it could be an emulsion with, with a water based system or it can be also made into a grease type of a compound like a lubricant and by, by doing a, you know cross linking polymerization you can make it to a gel or it, you can convert it into a resin uh, you know compound or elastomers or rubber. So the essential form of uh, uh, the sealants which are being used for the construction applications comes from the elastomers or rubber uh, you know, part of it. So we are going to go into the details of uh, uh, you know, this particular chemistry. And also just to uh, give you an overall view of where the silicon can be used is it can be used in multiple applications. So it will be you know, interesting to know so it can be also used for uh, beauty and personal care or home and personal care uh, applications where it can be used in the deodorants, moisturizers. Uh, you know uh, or perfumes or it can be used in gels or uh, or the hair shining uh, ointment so uh, whatever we are talking about uh, the essential uh, personal care uh, those have got some amount of silicon added to that to give a good wettability shining and also uh, avoiding increased feel so uh, it's not only in that particular segment it is used in food and beverage electronics chemicals solar or you talk about any of the household appliances, automotive, oil and gas or any packaging uh, or textile. So uh, into industrial applications like home and uh, you know, consumer goods or, or even an assembly and maintenance. Not only that it is also used for the healthcare applications. The chemistry is so beautiful that it can be used by formulating it to behave exactly in an opposite characteristics. Some of the interesting thing is in the construction applications we want silicon to bond, okay? we never want the silicon to leave any of the substrate where it is applied. Whereas essentially if you look at some of the packaging applications it acts like a release. Okay? So the release coating which is applied on the liner uh, behind the stickers is coated with silicon and it acts like a completely a release. So that is the beauty of this chemistry that it can give you an exactly opposite properties. So uh, and it's a versatile chemistry which can be formulated and to suit different applications. So to understand the beauty and depth of this chemistry, I'm going to take you through some of the you know old school uh, what we have seen. Uh, we might have read in schools about uh, silicon and organic. So I'm going to take you through some of that now, but I'm not going to really drill down into the chemistry part of showing you the formulas and making you answer me, but I'm going to talk to you about the basic difference between what is silicon and what is organic. So if you really see from the first slide what we talked about, silicon is a material which is coming from the quartz sand. Okay? So it is an, it's an, a material available in the earth crust like an inorganic compound. So this is an inorganic material which is mined from the earth and then it is converted into a polymer. So uh, the essential difference is organic polymers are generally made out of you know uh, like you can take from the petrochemical or the crude oil chemistries. So where it is cracked and converted into carbon. So organic chemistries are mainly carbon based whereas silicon is SiO, Si which is a basic uh, backbone and that's an inorganic chemistry. It has got side chains which are organic but the essential backbone is coming from SiO, Si. Okay? So we are going to talk about what is the main difference, what does it really help or it does it really help or what are the complications or the implications and we are going to look at what are the essential properties this is delivering. 
So, if I tell you about organic in terms of chemistry, the products which are being used for, uh, for the adhesive applications are generally polyurethane, polysulfide, acrylic or epoxy. So, you may be traditionally, uh, you know, you can, if you know the chemistry, you can also relate them to the brands available in the market. But, not, you know, just to quote so that you get a feel of the chemistry, like we all know Araldite because that's one of the powerful brands available in the retail, so that's an epoxy. So, similarly, if you talk about uh, different, uh, you know, commercially available products, so you can relate them to the chemistries. The one which is available as an inorganic is a silicon sealant and it, is, it comes from various uh, you know, manufacturers like Dow Corning or Dow Chemicals or, or other manufacturers like Momentu or Sika. So, these are some of the brands which are predominantly known in the market. And again, uh, this is to give you an overall feel of what is inorganic and inorganic chemistry perspective. So, what does it really uh, mean in terms of chemistry is, when you talk about, uh, you know, high performance weatherproofing materials, Silicon oxygen, the bond, which is the backbone of a silicon sealant, has got an energy of 450 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so if you uh, if you see for any external applications, there is going to be a sunlight which is falling on it. A climate like India, we will have 365 days of sunlight. Okay, we it is it is hard to not to have sunlight as in uh, leaving aside some very very few times of monsoon but still it will be bright and you know sometimes you get to see the sun. So, what is happening essentially here is when the sun is falling on it or then there is a UV component of the sun which is falling on a particular material. So, UV has got an energy of 400 kilojoule per mole. So, this particular energy can degrade whatever is lower than that. So, that is the simplest way to understand. So, if you talk about organic chemistries, their bond energies are lower than the UV uh, light energy. So, essentially they can be degraded, but they do stabilize them by using an external stabilizer which has which is got a limited life. But if you look at silicon, the silicon polymer has got an inherently stable backbone. So, this is essentially giving it an inherent stability against the exposure of you know against UV in the sunlight. So, this is one of the key differentiator that is the reason you can find this particular chemistry has overtaken many of the other products which are from the organic for you know uh, external applications. So, in external applications what we want is any product which is exposed to the UV, so sunlight is falling on it. So, the UV uh, that the product should have a good resistivity or stability against the exposures. Nobody wants to apply a product wherein somebody says that you use my product, stick the glass. But what you need to do is after every 5 or 7 years you need to remove it because the product is going to degrade. This would not have really given uh, the product uh, or the or this technology to move so much higher. So, the essential reason for this has become a very large success in the market today is because of the durability against exposure. It is not only against the sunlight, it is against it, it is it has got an excellent resistance against water, weather and also acid rains or um, you know rains. So, it has got extensively very good stability against most of the weather weathering uh, you know uh, properties. So, that is the reason this chemistry has proven much more durable and you know long lasting than the other chemistries which came before the silicon chemistry. So, I want you to really understand this particular slide because this gives you an overall view of why you should use a silicon sealant versus an organic sealant for an external applications. There are few applications wherein business because uh, there has been uh, you know uh, it's coming from a different climate like in Europe or any other climate where they don't have much of an uh, you know they may not be having some, such a sunlight or an UV or uh, you know weathering what we have in India. So, you might tend to see in some of the applications still organic has been used. And we have seen it that for a climate like ours, it gets degraded. Even uh, in India, people have used this as, as a product uh, for some of the applications like even insulating glass. And we have seen cases where the outer pane of the insulating glass has fallen down within few months or in years of time when, when in this exposure to UV had converted them or degraded them. Okay? So, uh, so that is the reason now silicon has become very popular and if you really see 
This chemistry uh, has been used in construction for more than 50 years, essentially on the structural bonding for the glass for more than 45 years. So that's the case history what we are talking about. So which is proving that this chemistry is a right chemistry and a very durable chemistry to be used for such application. And it's not only just, just the durability, but what it comes out is, uh, you know, uh, along with the durability, it also gives a sustainability. Okay, so uh, essentially any product which is less durable has to be redone every now and then. So there is going to be a repeated consumption. So what we achieve from silicon is by having a long lasting and a good durable life. So you are able to save three times carbon credits, you know, or uh, you know, less, uh, you, you don't uh, essentially put the carbon uh, greenhouse gases emissions. Uh, you know, you can save three times compared to that uh, organic chemistry, rather silicon save nine times more than CO2 than they create, okay. So uh, that's a punchline and uh, you can google it, these are all very well uh, available information on the net. So uh, essentially you are connecting to a chemistry which is also giving you a good carbon balance and this can also be supported by getting some of the lead certificate from the leading manufacturers for their products. So if you are going for a gold, platinum, silver or any rating if you essentially want uh, uh, how your materials are behaving and you because of that you get additional points. So with using silicon you can get an additional point because this is not going to give you the volatiles you know and which is going to be much much lesser than what it is needed by the regulations. Okay. So coming to the now we have understood the difference between silicon or uh, with organic and we have also understood how the silicon is made. So now we are going to go into the details of what is the silicon sealant is because this is the product which is going to be used for construction application widely for our facade essentially a structural glazing, insulating glass and weather seal and also other applications. So the essential thing again here on this slide what is needed to be understood is the silicon sealant is made with a lot of material added to that. So the one of the main thing what is really uh, making the property of this particular product impacted is the polymer, okay. So the siloxane polymer we saw that, so that polymer has to be added to make the sealant. So the amount of polymer added, uh, you know, varies the properties and this is an essential backbone which gives a very good mechanical, physical as well as other important properties uh, for the product. So you, you have to cross-link them because this is going to be a cross-linked rubber what you get. So for cross-linkings you need to have a different cross-linkers which has to be added. So there is a polymer chain so you need to cross-link them to make it as a matrix. Okay, so the cross-linkers are added, these are again uh, you know siloxane uh, uh, with the reactive ends. To make this reaction happen at a faster pace at the right pace catalysts are added. So the catalysts are added and this actually takes care of the rate of cure. Okay. So the curing rate has been controlled by the catalyst. So that is the reason uh, you know when I talk about in my further slides I am going to talk about what is that which is very important when you use the product or when you keep the product in shelf. Okay. The other thing which is also giving some amount of mechanical resistance to this particular material is the fillers. So the fillers are essentially uh, you know different types of fillers with different forms have been used which is actually acting as a reinforcement. So this improves the mechanical properties of the product. So the mechanical properties like the tensile strength, uh, you know shear strength, so those are the properties which are essentially given by the, the filler. So but as you all know there is an amount of addition in the of the filler will going to reinforce. But you add more and more, you can make the product bulkier or you can make it more with a filler so that you can reduce the cost. So by compromising on the polymer or other contents, you can add more filler. So what is important to understand is you should have a balanced chemistry of additives which are added to make this material. So we, you can make it imbalanced by adding some or other more to make it cost effective but then the application of that product needs to be understood clearly that this is not a product which is meant to be used for an application where it has to be uh, you know designed to take loads. So we need to understand and then we need to approach the manufacturer take their guidance of using what product to be used for which application. 
So for the sealant to dispense, so it has to flow uh, at a particular rate. So normally the extrusion rate that is what it is called as, so it should have a minimum extrusion rate of say in one component around 200 grams per minute, otherwise you will not be able to fill or apply the sealant into the joint. So there is some amount of plasticizer added to make it happen in most of the products. But you can do that with a special type of polymer selected and make it non-plasticized essentially for certain applications where you are looking for a non-staining or a non-bleeding with the seals. So there the plasticizer can cause a stain. So this plasticizer otherwise added to the other general products is a non-reactive fluid. This is not going to react with the matrix. So this will be separate and it will come out with time and it can potentially stain or streak. So depending upon the amount of plasticizer added, you can see some of the facades having the black line running down from the joint. So this is essentially because of the non-reactive plasticizer coming out of the sealant due to movement and then the dirt and dust which gets deposited, you know, they can make it look black. And other, other important additional special additives also are very important. The one of the, one of the ingredients which is added is adhesion promoter. The sealant has got a good, uh, you know, uh, uh, bonding characteristics to many materials and this can be further enhanced by adding an adhesion promoter. So this ensures that the product bonds to various substrates. So as I told you, the essential property of silicon sealant for construction application is to bond. So the intended applications what we are looking at, we want the silicon to bond and take loads or the take movements. So the adhesion is very, very important. So the adhesion promoters are, promoters are added as part of the ingredient and this helps in getting good bonding to the substrates. And some of the essential additional features for the product can be obtained uh, using uh, special additives. So, so some of the uh, applications like a moist area where you have a bathroom or a kitchen area, you are looking at an antifungal sealant, you don't want any mold growth to happen or mildew or an organism to grow on that. You want essentially that to be an area of, uh, you know, uh, moist area where it's prone to hot and humid climates or water. So you don't want the, you know, growth to happen. So a special additives like uh, fungicides, uh, some colors to get a good uh, different shades in the sealant can be obtained by, by adding pigments. So this is an essential ingredient slide. So uh, the silicon sealant comprises of these materials. So what is also a takeaway from the slide is these are needed, but you can always vary them to get a formulation to make it right for the application or make cheap and then it can be used and, uh, for a wrong application and it do not give you the desired properties.